What's up? My name is Nick Wichman, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about product photography and the three different types of photography you need to consider when working with a brand to sell their products or uh, represent them in any place that they're going to be selling or showing their products. Let's get into it. So the key to doing product photography is context. Understanding as the photographer where the photos, where the products are going to be shown, where they're going to live, what, you know, what their job is in that space. A lot of brands have websites, of course. The website for the brand is their place to express themselves and their brand tone. On the website, the job for product photography is going to be a little different than let's say on amazon.com where it is a, a strict pure commerce platform it's kind of brandless you know all those products it's not about representing their brand and their brand's tone and their brand's emotive qualities it's more about showing the product clearly and making some sales there's three types of shots that i'm going to go through the first one is the studio shot that is on the psych wall or in a light box it's all on white the second one is lifestyle shot. Lifestyle shots with some people in a place showing off the product instead of isolated on white. It's showing it in context with usually humans or uh, some other inanimate objects. The third one is those sweet, close-up, juicy, sexy, depth of field detail shots. These ones are the ones I think I love the most because their job is to showcase elements of the product in a sexy way that create an atmosphere uh, around the brand and around their design. So let's get into the first one, the studio shot. When you're shooting studio shots, you need a white backdrop where you take the paper and you curve it behind the product so it feels like it's an infinite white space. In a large scale, you call this a psych wall. The psych wall has curved corners that are white, so there's an illusion of infinite space. Only the product, only the elements you want to exist in this made up space are there. In a smaller space, we use light boxes, which are those little boxes that have the cloth walls and then one cloth that comes down and curves. And then you can put lights on either side. Product sits in the middle, isolated, looks great. The key to studio product photography is lighting. You need the lighting to be balanced. You need the lighting to be natural. So using a daylight coolness is more preferable. Sometimes people use a tungsten light, but generally speaking, it should feel like the only thing that you're seeing in the photo is the product. There's nothing distorting its view. There's no stylistic uh, decisions being made about the photo itself. You want to keep your aperture fairly high because you want the product in focus unless you're getting a close-up around the product in that white space which is totally fine but generally speaking the product should be visible from all angles and uh, depth of field is less of a priority here the second style of product photography is the lifestyle shot the point of the lifestyle shot is to give context to the customer the shopper the um, the user as to how the hell this product actually works in the real world. Um, I have this JBL speaker, this sweet little portable device looks like this. That's what it looks like. But when you take a product photo of this on white, it's hard to understand the scale. It's hard to understand what this thing really is. So we give it context by taking photos of it in the real world. A perfect example of a lifestyle shot for something like this would be to take this, get some models, take, you need a location, so we would go to the beach, get some towels, get a picnic basket, have the models holding their phones around this little speaker and imply that they're listening to Radiohead or something. It gives context to the product and scale. It's sitting next to them, they understand, the users understand how big this thing is. It's kind of the same for everything. I mean, jewelry, you, you like to see a uh, necklace or a cuff a, a, on a white backdrop because then you, there's nothing obstructing the view. But if you don't get to see it on a wrist, that cuff might be the size of a finger. And that's not ideal for the customer. So you want to take a contextual shot so, so the user understands the connection to them. And that's what lifestyle shots are for. 
The third style of shot, which I think is my favorite, it's the sexy, close-up, juicy, depth of field detail shot. Looking across the product, seeing it instead of one object, you're seeing it through the lens which you choose as a landscape. You're turning what was uh, handheld into something that is experienced as if it is an entire environment. For this JBL speaker, the, the texture on this speaker grill would be a perfect place to do a close-up, juicy, depth of field shot. And these shots are used, you know, to show the craft of the product. It's not really telling you about the quality of the product necessarily. It doesn't tell me how loud this speaker is or how well it connects to the Bluetooth. All it does is show that the engineers who made this really took their time and considered every angle, which in turn implies to the consumer that this is a well thought out quality product. It's necessary, it's a psychological trick, but it's necessary. The detail shot is really the opportunity where you can use dramatic artistic lighting. You can change the angles to be almost unrecognizable forms of the product itself, but it's really about uh, telling a, an artistic story with the landscape, which is the product. My recommendation is to use a macro lens, a lens that has a short minimum focal distance that can really get right in there, close up on the product, and really showcase the texture and the forms of the product in an abstract way. My favorite lens is the Sony G Master 90 millimeter macro 2.8. It is a beast of a lens and I use it all of the time for every product photo shoot that I do. This thing is, is just beautiful, it's crisp. Truly the minimal focal distance is what sets it apart from any other lens. I think the minimal fo focal distance for this is about 11 inches, which means for a 90 millimeter lens, it's so long that I can really just get in there and look down the product and just get those sweet details. It's so great. So consider checking out the macro lens for those sexy close-ups. To go back through these for context, context is key. Because really, if you just wanna take photos of products for fun, go ahead. Us other people are gonna be out here taking product photography to sell some products to make a little money. Because that's what, why we're in this. We love doing it, but, it, but if you're not monetizing your abilities and what the hell are you doing? So context is everything. I'm gonna go back through those shots and give context of where these images, where these styles of photography will live. The studio shots are perfect examples of um, real commerce shopping photography. When you go to Amazon on the left, you see that little photo over here shows the product. You're not confused when you see it because it's shot usually on white. Um, that is a studio shot. It's, it's about clarity and sales and that's okay. Uh, number two, the lifestyle shot. Lifestyle shots in commerce are to back up the studio shots. It's to give clarity and context to the user that the product and the product experience can relate to them. By seeing it, someone else relating to the product, they get to understand how they might be able to experience the product, which will push them to buy it. But those types of shots are also great for websites, for the brand website where they're showing a big hero space, they're showing people loving that product or the product in its environment in a living room or on a beach with a towel. Uh, that's great for a website to have as a hero image and have copy over or have a, as a support image with copy next to. The flexibility of that image is much broader than the studio shot. Beyond the website, both of those shots can live in catalogs, they can live in print in any way. You know, you could print it like Apple does on the side. I have an Apple product. Apple does their studio shots and they print it on, oh, they print the studio shot of the product on the box for the product that you're buying. It's an interesting method, um, but it works. This might be a render, I don't know, I don't care. The third style of shot, those sexy, juicy, close-up shots, those are the ones that have the most flexibility contextually. They have the most flexibility contextually because 
Not only are they supporting the product, maybe on the Amazon page, that's the last photo as you see those sexy shots or down below in the descriptor. It's engineering porn for those who wanna see the details. But on the website, those may also live on the product page for those brands, but in reality, it usually lives on the page in a contextual way with copy supporting the promise of the brand that this product is dope. That's the, you know, that's the basics of it, but they, uh, even beyond that, it can live on the homepage or a hero space on the website behind copy, and it's just a texture. That's what's beautiful about it. It's like once you get into the macro, it just becomes texture. It's really nice, uh, and you can use that on their website. You can use that on a brochure. You can use that on a catalog. It's, it's all about creating texture on a page rather than clarity of story or product. Those are the three types of, of photos that I see in, in product photography that I use all the time. And I would recommend, I'm gonna go one step further and say that if you are talking to a client and you're considering taking their product photography, uh, knowing the context of those photos is gonna make you so much more valuable to them. If you look at the website, see where they need these photos, and you build and structure your photography composition for that use, your job is half done for you. You just have to go in, take the types of shots you need for those placements, whether it's print or web or partner sites like Amazon or Best Buy or whatever. It's a roadmap for what you need to do. Always keep that in mind. Context is everything. Not every company understands that. So if you can bring that knowledge to them and say, cool, you want this studio shots of your products. That's great. You probably do need them. But beyond that, what are you planning on doing? How are you planning on using these? How are you marketing yourself? Do you have an Instagram? Do you need photos for that? Studio shots aren't that great for Instagram because there's no connection to reality or human experience. So maybe you upsell them by saying, this is what you probably need beyond this, and I can do it pretty affordably. So we'll take your studio shots, we'll set up a lifestyle shoot, we'll just get a couple people wherever, in a house, in a barn, and on a beach, whatever the fucking hell you want. We'll also grab uh, our macro lens, come in and take some super dope close-up photos of your product for that rich, beautiful, contextual texture for the website, for Instagram. We're just gonna freaking knock it out of the park the client's gonna love you. You're gonna stand out in your business because making sales for your clients is what your job should be, not making beautiful photography. Hopefully, those two can live together, but in reality, sales are what matters, and sales are what's gonna keep you getting more work. Whew, that was a lot. Um, so I, I hope you enjoyed this. If, if you did, uh, please hit like and, and consider subscribing. I'd love to hear what you think about these, these types of photography. Which one's your favorite? What's the craziest setup you've ever had to shoot some, shoot some product photography? And, and did it work out? Was it a nightmare? Uh, and if you think somebody could use this information, why don't you send it to them? Again, my name's Nick Witchman. If you have any questions about uh, any of this stuff, hit me up. I've been in the advertising business for a decade. I've been the guy looking for stock photos. I've been the guy talking to the photographers and videographers that we've hired. I know what the sites need. So now me transitioning in the past couple years into photography and videography has been so beneficial because really I'm just shooting for my own roadmap for every project I'm on. So if you need any insight, hit me up. Uh, I'm here. I'm happy to chat about anything. You'll do great. I know it. Good luck.